So failures can happen at any point. And one of the advantages of the four-way valve, or really in any fire uh, operation, of having a pumper positioned at the hydrant is a layer of redundancy. So a common potential issue is for the attack engine to have a failure at the fire scene, such as uh, you know running out of fuel, a rig that shuts off, any number of problems could happen. By using this four-way valve and having the ability to tie a engine into the system, what we're able to do is this engine down at the hydrant theoretically could pump the fire scene from all the way down here if the attack engine fails. The, the reverse is true as well. There is always the possibility that the relay engine has some sort of mechanical failure. One of the beautiful things about a four-way valve in this instance is if the relay engine has an issue, the supply pumper has a problem and quits or fails, because there's an internal clapper valve in this four-way hydrant valve, what will happen is the hydrant pressure will cause the clapper to clap over and water will still continue to go to the fire scene. Now, it may not be the desired flow rate, but water will still go to the fire scene. The attack engine is going to see a drop in their intake pressure, which is going to uh, require them to gate back so they don't cavitate their pump or collapse their supply line. However, they will not completely lose water. And this will allow them to either readjust their strategy until we can get another supply engine in position to go ahead and boost the pressure again. One other thing that you, depending on the fire hydrants that you have in your jurisdiction, some fire hydrant designs will come into a scenario where the hydrant wrench and the ball valve for the hand crank handle here will run into each other. So I can't operate the hydrant all the way. A way that I can get around this, there are really two options available to me. Option one is I can just, when I connect this four-way valve to the hydrant, I can just spin the whole thing upside down. Now, the crank is on the bottom, and barring that there's no clearance issues on the bottom of the valve, I can run the valve just like that. The only difference now is that my ports are going to be opposite what they normally would be. The second option, if you don't like that or don't want to do that, or maybe there's a clearance issue here as well, you can run a pony length of uh, large diameter hose off the steamer port and then connect the valve in the street. There are some fire departments that do that. All that's going to do is put your valve further out off the uh, into the street or into the grass or something like that, and it won't be directly on the hydrant. So when, when we charge the hydrant, right, there's going to be all this air in the supply line. That air can't enter the pump. That's bad for it. So we need to make sure we bleed the air before we open the intake. That's what this bleeder valve here is for, OK? So we want to make sure we get a shot of Jake right here watching this and having this air come out. It's going to sound like a jet engine. 